guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we will be maxing out your AMD GPU. Now, I know a lot of people who have AMD GPUs, they're always like, I'm stuttering, I'm not getting as much FPS as people with video cards around the same price. Well, now, if you follow this guide and you still are stuttering and stuff, skill issue. Anyways, so what we'll be doing is we'll be showing you all the best programs to max out your AMD GPU. I'm going to go through a little bit of overclocking. I'm not going to do a full out guide here, but what I will be showing is the best programs to use to get a little bit more out of your rig and what kind of drivers to use, all that stuff. So if you're excited, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. Let's get on to the guide. Also, if you have any questions or you just want to join, join the Chamber Tech Discord link. Uh, it's down below in the description. Yes, we talk about whatever who knows it's interesting there's pc help sections talk about you show your setups we do a bunch of testing here um overclocking obviously so if you guys are interested just click the link down below in the description all right so now let's actually get to the guide i will have all of these links down below in the description for you guys so that you can easily click to all of these in the order that they show up in the video the first thing you're going to want to install actually is display driver uninstaller now what this does is we're going to go into safe mode in a little bit. This just cleanly removes your driver. So basically, if you have old drivers, if you've never done this before and you have like a thousand drivers installed, this will clean them up. That's going to fix any issues. So install this. I already have it installed, but then you're going to want to click and go to your AMD drivers. Now, click whatever AMD GPU you have. So for example, let's say I have a 6700 XT. It's a pretty... When I see a lot, so you're gonna click whatever Windows version. Now, yes, okay. Both of these have so Windows 10 and Windows 11 have the exact same drivers. So you can click Windows 10 or 11; it doesn't matter. But here's the driver I'm gonna recommend. I'm not gonna recommend the new, latest recommended. Actually, I'm gonna recommend the software preview from May 2022. Right now, this is easily the best. It actually has improved DirectX 11 performance which is seen actually, especially in games like Fortnite actually, you can see better FPS, but I still would highly recommend DX12 for that game. So let's download this driver. So just click here and then click where it says software and just click download. I do not actually have to put in any of this information here. I already also have it installed. So I can skip this. And now we're actually gonna go to safe mode. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit Windows key and R. So you can open up your run command right here. Then you want to type in msconfig, then see this little window here, you want to hit boot, check safe mode, hit apply, hit okay, and then you want to hit restart, then it'll throw you into safe mode. So now we're in safe mode actually, so what you just want to do is hit okay or this or not, just go back to your run command, just hit msconfig again, I just want to do this just because sometimes I've had it actually be back into safe mode unless you do this. Uncheck safe mode, hit apply, hit OK, and then hit exit without restart this time. Now go to display driver uninstaller, hit DDU, open it. So you're gonna actually gonna wanna unplug your network or just not be connected to the internet so you don't have it. So what you can do is hit options, and then hit and check prevent downloads of drivers from Windows Update so that you actually will not install updates. This also disables Razer Synapse from installing. So if you have a Razer product and you hate that whenever you plug it in, you can disable that. Just hit GPU. If you've had NVIDIA GPUs or an Intel driver, hit this, but I have not. I've just had AMD. So we're going to hit this. Now you just want to hit clean and restart. Now what it's going to do is actually going to clean the driver. If you had a bunch of these installed and you've never done this before, it was going to take a little bit. But for me, I just have one driver installed, so it won't take an insane amount of time. When it's done, it'll restart and then you'll be back into Windows. So we're back in Windows. You see our display is super low resolution. We're just on the basic Windows driver now. So what you're gonna do is you wanna to go to where you actually downloaded your driver from. Now we're just gonna hit install. Now I'm going to install the full driver for you guys just in case you decide to do that as well if you need something like your clipping software and stuff through here. But I would highly recommend the minimal driver. Not the normal driver, but the minimal driver says you have the actual options still there. And there's not really a massive, F there's no FPS difference actually from minimal to no to uh, driver only. If you install the main driver, there's a little more telemetry. It lowers your FPS a little bit, 
So that's why I would recommend the minimal driver unless you need the full driver. So once this unpacks and stuff, we can actually see full way to install it. Now I go a little bit more in depth with this. I feel like there's no actual. What's nice though, unlike, unlike Nvidia, you don't actually have to like use a separate software. You just click minimal install. And I like to do also a factory reset. This isn't needed if you just clean install, but I still like to do it. Just hit install now. And um, it's going to ask you actually to restart your PC just so that it can do the factory reset on the driver. None of your Windows stuff is going to be hit. So you see, say restart now. Now we're actually restarting the PC. And I'll be back once it restarts and when it shows next. Back into Windows now. And as you can see, it instantly starts reinstalling the driver now. Now, time remaining, that's not actually going to take 10 minutes or whatever. So now when your flicker, when your screen flickers, that means it's installing the driver. It's switching over. And boom, we're actually in the actual driver now. So see it's at 100%. I would definitely recommend hitting allow AMD to collect usage information. You could restart if you want. I am. You can also hit finish, but I'm going to hit restart just to make sure that everything is good. So do another restart and we'll be back. Back in Windows and now it's time to actually go through the driver software. So right click your desktop or that's actually the only way to do it. I actually have a shortcut because I'm prepared. Yeah. So, okay, let's open up Radeon software now. It takes a little bit the first time. So, you see you're greeted with this prompt. So, I would recommend hitting... Oh, you see, this is what it does sometimes. It just, like, closes out when you first open it. All right, so now we're back. I'm going to recommend you uncheck check for updates, uncheck issue detection. Um, You don't have to check for updates. You're already on the latest version. Graphics. So, don't touch any of this except for wait for vertical refresh rate. Off. This just forces VSync so you'll never turn on in games. Um, Anti-aliasing, use application settings, multi-sampling. Um, texture, filter, texture filtering quality, hit performance, tessellation mode, override, and then force it to off. If you're a benchmarker and use something like 3D Mark, this is banned, but we play games, so it doesn't matter. Reset shader cache. I like to do this. Just hit reset just in case there's anything wrong, but the driver should have cleaned this out as well. So now we're going to go to your display tab. Now I only have one monitor right now because I'm using the capture card pass through. So we'll just talk about some of these things. FreeSync. If you are playing games and you're significantly below your monitor's refresh rate, like if you have 240 hertz or 360 hertz and you're only getting like 200, I would recommend turning this on. But if not, leave it off because it does increase your input lag and you want the lowest input lag possible. Um, HDMI link insurance, you don't need this color depth 8 bit per just choose the max here that you can do and then see I just clicked 8 bit and then for the pixel just do full um none of this matters here you don't display this is like vivid I'm not a fan if you like that cool custom color this is where you can actually change like your digital vibrance that's the same as saturation here um yeah color deficiency if you're colorblind go ahead um, you can make custom resolutions here, create new. So you go through all this. You have a lot more options here. I don't need it. And then override, you have to accept. I would recommend disabling HDCP. I'm not going to because it's going to mess with my capture card. But if you can do this, it will lower your input lag slightly, like half a millisecond. So it's something if you're really interested in that. Now let's go to the video tab. There's nothing here to touch. Preferences, um, this, this, this. Now I did choose the minimal driver. So what I'll say is turn off as many things if you need for this. And then there's a tuning tab. We are not going to be using that, but if, because it's not needed, but I'm on the minimal driver as you guys can see. So now let's talk about what's next. So we're going to need to download GPU-Z, this, and then as well, so just download this. This is for your GPU. And also download more power tools. What this is, is just scroll down and you'll get to the download link. This allows us to modify our vBIOS on our GPU. This is not going to, this is not going to actually, it's not actually modifying the BIOS. It's like modifying the driver. Because every time you reinstall your driver, you have to reset this. But this is still under warranty. None of what I've done will mess with your warranty. So just... Making sure you know that. So, next you're going to 
Next, since you've downloaded both of these two, just open up GPU Z. If it gives you a prompt, just hit no. So, um, first of all, check your bus interface. Make sure that if it's make sure it's at either at at x sixteen four point zero at x sixteen three point zero. If you have a sixty six hundred XT, it will only say x eight. Just make sure it says that it supports it's running either at three point zero or four point zero of what it reports or support. Sorry. Now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to hit this little share icon. Hit save to file. This is actually going to save the actual driver or the BIOS that you have on this card to it. Now file name you can set it to whatever I just have it to this set whatever to the standard name. File name. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. Hit OK. There it is. Here's the file right here. Now hit close. Now we're gonna open up more power tools. Now you're gonna want to open this, install it. Then you want to hit the GPU you have. Hit load. Now go to your desktop. Those are my uh, my custom more power tools. But we're not gonna get into that right now. We're gonna hit Navi 21. Now you're going to have all of these options. We're going to want to go to feature control. You're going to want to uncheck all of them that are DS underscore on the left. Uncheck GFX off on the left. This stops it from going to 500 megahertz at idle or when there's low load. This really helps in a lot of games such as like CSGO. And then on the right, we're going to uncheck DFC state. That is all you need to do actually. But if you're, in, if you're an overclocker and you want to push these cards a little bit harder while overclocking and you want to increase the voltage, check temp dependent underscore VN. This will allow you to increase the voltage without mods. I'm not going to do it for this one. I'm going to show you how, where you actually change the voltage though. But all you got to do is hit OK. Just hit, you can hit save. Save it. So I'm just going to set this to AMD. So this is 6900 XT, more power tools. Then hit right. Hit OK. That's all you got to do. But if you want to increase your power limit, you're going to need to go to power tab. You can check these. So you're going to change your GPU, GFX, the SOC. Now GFX and SOC are in amps. Um, more power tool. The power limit is in watts. So what the best way I would recommend this is so for every power connector you have on your GPU. So if you have two power connectors, that'd be 300 watts plus 75 watts for the slot. If you want to be a little more safe, you can do about 50 watts. So if I had a 2x8 pin GPU with the PCI Express slot, I type in 350. I actually have a 3x8 pin. I have the 1600 XTOC formula. So that would mean I do 450 plus 50. I do 500 watts. But in games, you're actually not going to do hit this at all so I wouldn't recommend touching this unless you're playing an intensive game or once again overclocking and then this is where if you did check temp dependent vmin on the right you would check right here so vmin low slash high for gfx and soc so for example you could hit like so for these I would do like 1200 for low and min on gfx and soc but I'm not going to and then you don't need to touch any of these things. These don't do anything I've tested at all. So now just hit right again. If you did change anything in there, hit okay, hit exit. Now I would recommend installing MSI Afterburner at this time as well. So I've already downloaded it. Just go through it. You can install River Tuner Statistic Server at the same time if you want. But so now we're just going to hit MSI Afterburner. Now you're going to check and click disable ULPS, hit apply. Now hit yes. So this will actually reboot the PC. It's going to apply the more power tool and it's going to disable the ultra low power state for your GPU in MSI Afterburner. That's just going to stop it from down clocking when there's low loads. This happens sometimes in some low GPU bound games, especially CSGO, maybe Valorant, any game where GPU is not the big focus and it's more CPU. That's when it's going to change. But now let's let it restart and then let's go into the more simple overclocking things. So we are now back in Windows. So what I'm going to recommend is you click, you download this pro, this file called Overdrive and Tool. Now, if you're on one of the new 60, not like 6,000, the big Navi 50 XT cards, I don't know if this will work yet. There might be a version coming out soon. This one does support the 6,900 XT. So I know may not do the new one. So 
download it and open it. Now you're just gonna make sure you click your GPU. So these are the two things I'm gonna, this is the few things I'd recommend changing. Power target, change that to 15%. This just gives you your full power limit. That's, now if it changes back to that, you might have to, it might not be 15% for you. It might be like 10%, but just 15% is typically what I've seen. And now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna hit timing level. Now do level one. This is, when, this is going to enable the fast timings mode. It's gonna be a little bit faster for your VRAM. Um, minimum and maximum. Now, if you don't wanna go into overclocking, I just recommend setting your minimum to 100 megahertz less than what is set at the maximum. So for example, that'd be 2509. Now I just hit apply, and now that's gonna be the, G, the overclocking runs. If your, temp, if your GPU gets very hot, you don't wanna set a static speed or you can also just set a fan curve so like right now max will get at 80c is 57 degrees now i would set something like 60 for all of these or maybe at like 80 degrees it'll go to 100 degree, it'll go to 100 percent fan speed it's all up to you you can also uncheck zero rpm mode i'm not going to do this but if you decide to do this and you're still running into temperature issues um either want to repaste the card or there's something defective like it's not actually covering your whole GPU die. So maybe talk to your the place where you got your GPU and talk about them about that. But if you feel safe repacing, go ahead. I have plenty of repacing videos on my channel. I even repasted my 6900 XT and put liquid metal on it. I would not recommend liquid metal for most people though. But now that we've all done this, you can just hit here. Now hit new. Just type in, I don't know, um, GPU OC. Hit OK and now hit save. So this is just going to save your overclock. Now, if your PC ever like hard crashes, it's not going to work, which is why I'd recommend using Afterburner as well. So you're just going to want to right click this. So this will save your overclock. Now hit the little Windows icon here. What this is, is this just make sure that every time it starts up, it will reapply your overclock. As you can see, it's running at the minimum clock speed, which is what we wanted. So this. It's all you need to do if you are just wanting to game, you can now enjoy your games. But if you are an overclocker and want to get higher out of it, what I'd recommend is downloading, choosing one of these two programs, 3D Mark. This is a paid software. You can get it for like five bucks from some places. There's also a free version on, uh, I think it's Guru 3D. Let's go to 3D Mark, scroll down, and you'll see. Yeah, Guru 3D, there's a download for this. This does not let you loop it, but if you pass one 3D mark, you're typically fine. Or you can also download Superposition and run the 8K Extreme. I'll show you guys. Actually, let me grab it. So, you gen Superposition. So what I would recommend is just running the 8K benchmark. If this passes, fine. It's not the best stability. But now I'll show over my recommended settings for 3D Mark. So here's 3D Mark. If you do have the free version, the only benchmarks you can run, I believe, are the Time Spy Extreme, maybe Time Spy. I don't know if you can do Fire Strike. I do not remember actually. But what I'd recommend if you do have the full version, so just run Time Spy Extreme. You can actually uncheck the demo. Just run this. Um, the other things I would recommend is also Fire Strike Extreme. Um, so the extreme versions are 4K versions. Ultra is 1440p, and then standard like this, these two are 1080p. Port Royal is 4K. No, this is actually uh, 1440p. Kind of depends, but that's the thing for Fire Strike and Time Spy. Those are the two I recommend. Now, if you have the full version like I do, you can actually loop. So this will do 20 loops of the test. So you can do any one of these tests you'd like. I do recommend the Time Spy Extreme. It takes about 20 minutes, but it is worth it. You will see if you are stable or not. So if you're an overclocker, what you would do is you would just be like, oh, I want to find the maximum. Increase in about 50 megahertz. So for example, my max OC is, I believe, 28, 820, and 2800 with 0.25 volts. So I did increase the V4. And then my VRAM is actually 2150. This is a very good GPU. This is not, do not copy this. It will not work. So I'll reload this profile. This is a, this will still get you more FPS though than what you'd had before. So 
there's some simple overclocking guides. If you guys are interested, I will make a GPU overclocking guide for you guys on AMD. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. Um, comment down below how much you hate NVIDIA and how you get more FPS than your NVIDIA friends now. Show them your FPS now. Make them cry. Join the Discord. Follow me on all my socials. If you guys have an AMD GPU, don't feel comfortable overclocking. You want more FPS? I offer a service. I will overclock. Not just your GPU, I overclock your RAM, your CPU, everything. Get you the max FPS in any game. Join the Discord if you want more information. But I'll see you guys later. Peace.